Thursday where we were graphing from a table and we kind of used function notation to do our work. So <clears throat> they give us this table. We have x and f of x. And we're looking at this function right here, f of x equals x squared. So when it says, when it tells me that x is negative 4, I take negative 4 and I plug it in for x, right? So it becomes exactly, but I'm just going to write it out just so you can kind of see it, but you don't have to write it out for every single one. So f of negative 4 means that I take negative 4 and plug it in for that x. So it becomes negative 4 squared. And what's negative 4 squared? Oops, not negative 14. Negative 4. 16, right? A positive 16, yes? Because if I square a negative number, it just becomes positive. Okay, so same with this. Uh, x is now negative 3, so f of negative 3 is negative 3 squared. I'm not going to write it out for a whole lot. So what's negative 3 squared? Good. Okay, I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to have you fill in the rest. And then I want you to graph. Okay, and I'll talk about that in a second. So f of now negative 2 f of negative 2 is negative 2 squared. What's negative 2 squared? 4. Good. Okay, so I'm going to have you keep going, keep filling in these numbers in for x into our equation, our function. <clears throat> but then remember as well, this tells me um, <clears throat> This is also telling me points on the graph, right? This is x, and this is like y. So this first point is negative 4, 16. So I'm going to plot that point on the graph. Negative 4, 16. Negative 3, 9. There's no 9 on the y-axis, but I just go right in between 8 and 10. So negative 3, 9, negative 2, 4, okay? Can we take it from there? Yeah? Okay. So get there, and then you could answer number 2, number 3. Um, I haven't talk, talked to you about domain and range yet, so skip number 4. But then look at number 5, number 6, and number 7. So everything except for number 4. We okay, any questions on that? I'm gonna give you like 10 minutes or so. What's up, Alexa? It's been a while since I've been around, so it's okay, I'll figure it out when I get it. Okay, just X and Y, right? So the X coordinate, I look at the X axis, Y coordinate, I look at the Y axis. Does that help you? Sure. Just keep working on it. <clears throat> oh, it's still there. I figured. All right, let's continue filling in this table. What am I going to get when I plug in negative one for X? What's my output? Good. One. And zero? One. Two. Three. Four. Perfect. Right? So what do you notice about, like, these numbers? Yeah, it kind of goes down and then it goes back up in the exact same way, right? And if I graph this, I'm going to end up negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16. And what is this shape? What does it look like? It is a parabola. It looks like a U, doesn't it? Right? 
And does this parabola just stop at this point and this point? No, it keeps going forever, right? So I can even put arrows on either end. Good. So yes, this is a U shape. And some people said it's a V shape, but that's really, that's a different type of graph. This is the, ah, let me redo that. That's the absolute value graph. will look like a V, like this, more pointy. The parabola is a smooth shape. It's a U shape. And again, that is called a parabola. Not a parabola, not a parabola, a parabola. Parabola. It's not that big of a word. It's eight letters. That's not that bad. Parabola. There you go. You got it. Not parabola. Parabola. Okay. And what's the lowest point on this graph? What is the minimum point on the graph? Zero, zero, right? This point right here. Do you guys remember what that point is called? That place where the parabola turns around? Yeah, the vertex. Vertex. Good. Okay. And now I'm going to show you this. So domain and range. This isn't on your test. I'm not grading you on this necessarily, but it is something that you'll see a lot of in Algebra 2. And I think it's just better to be exposed to things before you have to deal with them later. So let's just talk about this real quick. Domain means means where does the function exist on the x-axis? So I think about left and right, where does the function exist? And range is talking about where does the function exist on the y-axis? So these are the possible values of x, that's my domain, possible values of x and range is the possible values of f of x or y. So it only exists at zero, zero. So not on the x axis, but look like what values of x? could I use as an input on this parabola? Any number, that's it, any real number. I could plug in negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative 50, negative 150, negative 250, whatever. And then it keeps going back the other way. So it's all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. I'll show you a couple different ways of writing that. So it's the possible values of x. And for this function, it's all real numbers, which means x can be anywhere from negative infinity to, I wrote that bad, to positive infinity. So that's kind of the notation we use to write it. Sometimes we'll also write it like this, negative infinity to positive infinity. Those are all saying the exact same thing, saying you could plug in any x value. Shh, cut it out. You can plug in any x value into this function, and you will get an output. And then range talks about possible values of f of x. So what, is, what are the possible values that I'd get in this column over here? Good, any positive number, any positive number. So zero or greater. So all positive numbers. But when I say all po positive 
numbers, that's kind of ambiguous. I'm not sure if I mean zero or not. So I would write it like this, f of x can be greater than or equal to zero. f of x can be greater than or equal to zero. Or if I want to write it in this same notation, it's like start at zero, go all the way to infinity zero to infinity. I think actually technically it should be a bracket here instead of a I haven't looked at that in a while. So you can have like a bracket or a parenthesis. The bracket is kind of the same thing as like greater than or equal to so it can be equal to zero all the way up to positive infinity infinity but it doesn't really make sense to put a bracket with infinity because infinity just is and everything. So anyway, all positive numbers. So the point is just that the x values, you can plug in any x value at all and it's going to work in this function, but your output has to be a positive. And why do your outputs have to be a positive here? Because it's What did you say? The lowest point is zero, yes. And what happens when you square a number? Can you get a negative number when you square something? No. no. So that's why everything is positive there. Okay. <clears throat> Where is this function decreasing? Where is the function? Yeah, when what? Yes, yeah, say that again, sorry. Say that again. Yeah, when the x values are negative, so it's decreasing right over here when the x values are negative. Someone else said in uh, quadrant four, it's decreasing. That's good. Um, Colton, what did you write down? You wrote something. You wrote negative four to zero, but really it's, huh? No, this is quadrant four. It's. One, two, three. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's quadrant two. Yeah. Um. But you you had written down negative four to zero. It's decreasing. How would you fix that? Because it's not just negative four to zero. But I'm saying if I were to say this is decreasing just from negative four to zero. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. And then where is it increasing? Zero to positive infinity, right? So when X is negative, F is decreasing, right, when X is less than zero, and it's increasing when X is positive. When X is greater than zero, good. Okay. So it's decreasing, can't spell this morning. Decreasing over here, increasing over here. Good. Does the f of x have a constant rate of change? Why do you say that? Right, only linear equations have a constant rate of change. So no. It is non-linear. I can also tell from looking at the graph, if I look between, if I look between negative four and negative three, is it changing the same amount as if I look at negative three to negative two? It is not, right? This part is decreasing by seven and then this part decreases then 
by five, right? So this is, I can write it down here. So this is plus seven. This is only plus five. This is only plus three. That's only plus one. So it's not changing by the same amount each time. You guys. Okay. And then what about the dashed line? Where does the dashed line go to find right down the middle, right? If I were to fold the parabola in half and fold it in half perfectly, I would fold it along this line. Do you guys know what the equation of this line is? Good, x equals zero. Remember, vertical lines have what kind of slope? Undefined. And their equation always looks like x equals a number. So that line is x equals zero. Good. So we did that. Okay, give me two x values that have the same output. Two x values that have the same output. Somebody, give me two x values. Good, negative one and one both have an output of one. And if I look at that, if I look at negative one, one, and one, one, what do you notice about their distance from the axis of symmetry? It's the same, right? So this is just saying parabolas are symmetrical. Parabolas are symmetrical. They're the same distance away from the axis of symmetry. Okay, we've got a few notes to take, and then you've just got those four problems on the back. So, first thing, the graphs of all quadratic functions are parabolas. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Are parabolas. And just in case you forgot what a parabola looks like in the last 30 seconds, we'll draw another picture. Like this. Okay. And vertexes have, or bleh, Parabolas have a vertex. And what do you notice about the relationship between the vertex and the axis of symmetry? Exactly, the vertex is on the axis of symmetry. Quadratic. And so far, we've looked at quadratic equations in standard form. What do quadratic equations look like in standard form? Good. AX squared plus BX plus C. There's also factored form, right? Factored form looks like this. Two binomials, X plus M, X plus N, something like that. Two binomials. So those are two forms of quadratics. I'm going to teach you another form tomorrow or Wednesday called vertex form, but we won't deal with that right now. But there's different forms of quadratic equations, but all quadratic equations look like parabolas. They all look like parabolas. And the parent function, parent function, they call it a parent function because it's like all the other graphs come from the parent function. So the parent function, oops, f of x equals x squared is the most basic most basic quadratic function 
Right, and it looks like what we saw on the front. It has a vertex where? Where's the vertex of the, of the parent function? Zero, zero. Good. My vertex is at zero, zero. And what's the axis of symmetry again? What is the equation for the axis of symmetry? x equals zero. Good. Mm -hmm. Got a few more things to write. Domain of our quadratic parent function is all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of our parent function is f of x. Our output has to be greater than or equal to zero. Again, the axis of symmetry, AOS, because I don't like to write axis of symmetry out a million times. Right? AOS, again, is just x equals zero. And as well, we can write the slope gets steeper the further away, or as you move away from the vertex. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have you do one, two, three, and four. Or one, two, and three. I'm going to do four with you really quick because I haven't shown you this. And this is kind of cool. Do you need more time up here? Anybody? I'll scroll back up in a minute, okay? If you need more time, I'll scroll back up. Okay, so for number four, it asks, what is the constant second difference of our parent function? So I'm going to make a little table. I want you to do this too. A little table x and f of x. And for this parent function, when x is zero, what is f of x? Huh? Mm-hmm. When x is 1, what is f of x? When x is 2, what is f of x? Mm -hmm. And when x is 3, what is f of x? Good, 9. Okay, so when it's talking about this like difference between, I'm looking at the difference between these numbers. So 0 to 1, what's the difference? 1. 1 to 4, what's the difference? Four to nine, what's the difference? Five. Good. Okay, and then second difference, I'm going to do it again. So what's the difference between one and three? And what's the difference between three and five? Good. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever given a table of values, you can do this. And it's going to put me once, twice to get to this, like, constant change, right? It took me two levels to get here. That means that my function is a second degree function. Second. We may have gotten there if we added four key points to the last four. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to four to nine to 16, right? The difference between four and nine was five. The difference between nine and 16 is seven. So the difference between five and seven is two. So yeah, it keeps going. 
So it's a second degree function, which, which just means that the highest exponent is two. So highest exponent is two. Which means that it's a quadratic because quadratics have that squared X. Okay. And this is like more information than you really need for your test next week. But um, when you take algebra two, you start with quadratics. So the more you see now, the easier your life will be in the future hopefully. Okay. All right. I want you to do numbers one, two, and three. I've got 25 minutes. That's more than enough time as long as you're not messing around. Okay. Scroll back up to the notes if you miss the notes.